it was very, very distressing to see Grandad be confused, not know where he was, and um, to he, he kept looking up as though he could see windows. He kept asking to close the windows um, and reaching out for things. Delirium is not well understood. It's not well understood from across the healthcare professions and we very much underdiagnose people who have an active delirium. It involves an altered level of arousal, so people can either be very agitated and distressed or they can become sleepy and less alert. We need to do more to ensure that we, as healthcare professionals, understand and can recognise and respond to patients who are at risk of and do go on to develop delirium. Well, I'd gone, I'd gone in my bed and I was just lay there and then all the lights went out and I must, I must have been dozing off and um, I began to look round and I thought, I, I am wondering where I am here. She asked me about a patient that was opposite her and the window and she said there's something on the window. I said there's nothing on the window mom. I said that is a, it was a drip stand and it was bag, a saline bag. And I said no, I said it, because mum said it looked like a clown with a long face and it was upsetting me more because I felt as though I wasn't getting through to her and it wasn't my mum. I was no, I keep saying it, I was never as frightened in my life. My dad um, also when we walked on to the ward he was, um, some days he would see a cat running from under the bed and would say to me, mind where you're walking, you might stand on the cat. You could also tell when my dad was hallucinating because his eyes were flicking all over the wall. Detecting delirium at its earliest stage is important and we know that you can't detect delirium just by looking at somebody or by uh, suspecting delirium because somebody is confused. You need to use a specific uh, tool. So we have introduced some bespoke um, electronic tools to be able to assess for delirium but they also enable us to code for delirium and that's been vital in terms of really understanding the prevalence of delirium in our acute hospital. So here at Salford we have the new delirium assessment tool which is picked up really easy by us nurses. When doing the clinical observations you can input that they have a new onset confusion which will flag up to complete that assessment tool. The nurses will fill out that document and it will trigger to get a medic to come and assess this patient and see if this is a delirium, any underlying causes that may have contributed to it and to then commence treatment. So the benefits that patients are starting to see are that they are assessed early in their journey at the front door of hospital for delirium. They have been treated in a timely way and in that way we are able to reduce the distress caused by delirium. Knowing that uh, Salford Royal is at the forefront of uh, this piece of work in, in respect of delirium can only benefit the patient and their carers. I think it's really important that the good work that we've done here gets spread across so that we're actually across Greater Manchester that we're, getting, we're able to um, access the same kind of service everywhere um, and that every patient will get treated the same. We have had a great deal of interest from other organisations in this project. This project has been highly successful in improving our detection rates and other outcomes for people with delirium and also for assessing for undiagnosed dementia. What we would like to do is to be able to bottle that formula to provide a blueprint for other organisations such that they would be able to implement these pathways themselves. It's essential that senior leaders across Greater Manchester think about delirium and develop strategies to be able to 
respond to patients who develop delirium and most importantly strategies to prevent delirium from occurring in the first instance.